Hi, this is Dee with University of San Diego Career Development Center. Welcome to Alumni Zoom Trips, a series of pre-recorded interviews with USD alumni experts about how to navigate the long-term impact of COVID-19 on our communities and workplace. This program is co-hosted with the Office of Alumni Relations. Joining me today is Dima Gawi, a trailblazing female immigrant who was born in Turkey, raised in Jordan, and migrated to San Diego over 20 years ago. She holds an MBA from USD and a bachelor's from SDSU. Her 2018 book, Breaking Vases, chronicles her story of crossing continents and barriers to find meaning and purpose and empower others to find theirs. In a whole other life, she was a talent manager for IBM and a project manager for Intuit, and she refers to her time living and working for IBM in Tokyo, Japan, as one of the most meaningful experiences of her life. I'm thrilled to interview her today to learn more about her amazing background, how she assesses the impact of COVID-19 on women-led small businesses, and what tips she might have for those of you, us, working and leading virtually. Um, hi, Dima. It's wonderful to see you this morning. Hi, Dee. How are you? Good. Um, so I will go ahead and start us off with, um, you know, wanting to find out how you, you think your USD degree has prepared you for a career in business, um, first as a talent and project manager in the technology industry, and later as a qualified executive coach and entrepreneur. Oh, absolutely. So I have to share, I came to USD for the first time for a friend's wedding, and that was right before I moved to the US in 96. And I fell in love the minute I stepped my foot on the campus. And I told myself, if I ever work on my master's, this is where I want to graduate from. But at that time, I had a lot of family situations that were barriers that stopped me from pursuing my education. So it took me a few years to take care of that. And then as soon as I was ready, I applied to USD. I got uh, accepted. And uh, my MBA was, in my opinion, what, one of the most life-changing experiences in my life. Even when I did my TEDx, the first one I gave, I talked about USD and I talked about a specific professor that helped me at USD to uh, discover my potential and discover my leadership abilities. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, I am a Middle Eastern woman originally. So I was programmed to believe that I should be a follower, I should be quiet, not have a voice. And I believe my education at USD allowed me to discover my potential to a level that I've never ever imagined possible as a woman. I, at least Middle Eastern woman. And in my situation, I believe the small class sizes, the amazing quality of, my, uh, of the students that I was going to the program with, and the attention that my professors gave uh, to me, that, that made all the difference. So I, I believe it gave me the foundation, mainly because it helped me realize that I have leadership potential. From there, I got hired into so many different leadership roles. And when I look back, it all started at USD. Okay. And I mean, given that a lot of our students have shifted to this um, online learning format, what advice would you provide them, you know, to take advantage of their, um, their time at USD, although it's currently, you know, um, predominantly remote? Yeah. So it's very important for them to use this time. This is most likely the only time we're going to have in our lifetime where we're going to be in a situation like this. Hopefully only time. Who knows? Um, so use the time to stay connected with your professors. Uh, I'm sure the professors are stay, doing their best to ensure that the students are staying connected, but also stay connected with your classmates. Um, whether it is with projects you're working. This is, it's really, whether we're virtual or in person, in my opinion, it's not much different other than me seeing you over Zoom or be sitting next to you. So our relationships, building relationships, building trust, uh, learning from others, that should not be affected. Um, so we need to focus on it. And also at the same time, use the time to reflect about who you are, the kind of uh, career you want, the kind of skills you want. So think about a lot of students, they had to commute to school. They had, they had to spend time going from one classroom to another. They don't have to do this now, but don't waste this time. Use it maybe to take personality assessments, to reflect what kind of career you want. Um, and that, I, I believe this is the time that is so important for all of us to pause and reflect. 
And it, how often would we get something like this? Because here's the deal, a lot of students, they graduate, including myself, and hoping that we would get a, a company to hire us. And it's not a matter of just a company hiring you. It's a matter of you applying for the jobs that you're passionate about. So spend the time, think about what are you passionate about? What, are, what is the value you bring? And right now as a student, it may not be too clear. And that's why this time is so important uh, to help you give clarity, to, to get clarity. Okay, well, thank you so much for that. And it's, it's amazing that you brought that up because the Career Development Center is really for, here for that reason, right? To support our students, um, particularly more so during times like this when they're, they're faced with so much uncertainty and anxiety and to be able to support them um, through that reflection as well. So thank you. Um, as a successful women entrepreneur and a business owner, how do you assess the impact of the current crisis on small businesses, particularly women-led small businesses? Mm, okay, so uh, when I think about that, I don't think it is gender specific. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the situation we're living in right now has a different effect on women-owned businesses compared to men-owned businesses. It is on everybody, and that is something for us to, to realize and it has a major effect. Like when I think about my business, I'm a keynote speaker. I lead uh, uh, training programs. I do coaching. And it was a lot affected. Most of my, the things I have booked got rescheduled. So whether I'm a, a female or a male, it is affecting everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's why it is so important right now as business owners to think about what do we need to do to adapt to this environment. A lot of people keep thinking and saying all the time that they can't wait for things to go back to normal uh, because they want, they love their life the way it was. They want to go back to the, the life that they lived. I don't think things are going to go back to the way we had them 100%. And that's not a bad thing. Even, even though uh, businesses may open and theaters may open and we, we will have more chances to leave our home, but I believe us as people, we're going to change. We're going to evolve. The goals, the aspirations we had before the COVID-19 may shift a little because this time is giving us time to reflect. So my point is adapt. Whether you're a business owner, whether you're an employee for a company, whether you're a student, figure out what value can you give in the new world? How can you adapt to this environment? Like in my situation, big part of adapting is doing a lot of workshops online. My coaching is all online right now mm -hmm. for the executives that I work with. I see you, you are adapting and you're shifting a lot of things online. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a good thing because our world, and that's a positive thing, is never going to go back to the way it was at least 100%. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that insight. And um, for our students and our alumni who are seeking new professional opportunities during this time, um, what, would your, um, what would your advice be for them as they're sort of navigating through this more volatile um, climate? Yeah, yeah. And I recognize, especially for students that are about to graduate or they're graduating next mm -hmm. month, it is, it, I, I see how difficult it is because already a lot of organizations, they're cutting costs and they're, they're changing their internship programs uh, because of what we're experiencing. So here's what I recommend for them. First is ask yourself, how are you different? How are you unique? That is so important because the more you get clarity of who you are, the better that's going to help you with the interviewing skills. I realize a lot of universities, they don't spend time teaching the students to understand their brand, whether it is their digital or their physical brand, to help them understand how are, how are they different? What are they bringing to the table? And so spend some time during what we're experiencing to reflect on these things. If you feel struggling and you cannot know, you don't know, uh, do some personality assessments. There's a lot of them online that, uh, and some of them are not cheap. My, I mean, not, not expensive. My favorite is called uh, Strength Finder. Okay, well, it's interesting you said that because, I mean, see, as in CDA, we actually provide those free of charge for our yeah. students. And yeah, so absolutely, um, this is a great reminder for them to 
reach out to us um, for assessments like the MBTI, like the, you know, um, yes. the Clifton Strength. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so go to the Career Center at USD <laughs> and uh, work with them to help you with the assessments that are available for you mm -hmm. for free. This is the time for you to reflect. So this is my first tip. The second tip is be patient. Obviously, you may not get exactly the kind of job you want as of June. It may take some time. So think about what can you do in the short term that's going to help you with building specific skills that are important for you to grow. I know a lot of the students, they can't wait to graduate to get the job. They need to pay their student loans. They, have, they want to feel like adults and they have their, their own home and all of this. So I, I get it. But at the same time, think about what can you do to bring value for yourself and for the community in the short term until, so it's like a bridge. Because it, I, I'm not gonna tell you you're gonna find a job in June. Some of you may be fortunate and have something lined up already, which is so great. Others, not as much. So be patient, use this time to reflect and do something in the short term. Maybe it's a short, a part-time job. Maybe it is a project-based job. It's okay until you develop new skills and until things start moving and then hopefully you'll get what you want. That, yes, I mean, that's, that's wonderful advice. They may not get their dream job, right? Right off the bat, but at least they can find um, projects, assignments, positions where they can transfer some of their, um, their skills. Yes. Um, and talking about skills, um, you know, you as a qualified coach, a public speaker, former IBM executive, business consultant, you've sort of straddled multiple career tracks. And based on that experience, how would you define the skills for the future of work? And how would you advise building them? Considering, mm -hmm. as you previously said, that nothing is really going to be the same moving forward. Yes, I, I've been thinking about this question before even the COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, because we are going through a major change as humanity. Think about all of the uh, AI, artificial intelligence, robotics, and how much this is going to take more and more of the jobs. Any job that can be automated will be automated in the short, short term. So think about for the next three to five years, a lot of jobs may net, not need humans to do. So I've been, I've been thinking about it. And now I realize with the COVID-19, it's, it's resulting in us thinking more about these things. Mm -hmm. I, I read recently that the majority of the layoffs, um, somehow a big, I'm not saying everybody, but a big percentage are of the layoffs that happened recently are more women than men because with women we tend to have more um more the the process oriented jobs that can be somehow let go of in the short term or can be automated so we need we need to be careful about this so here are some things for you to think about uh, before i tell you what i think are the skills i want to challenge everybody to think about what do you feel will be in demand in the future so for the next three to five years, our world is going to change. So what do you believe is going to be in demand? The services, the products, and think about what can you do to be part of the solution for these things. And that's going to help you to identify the kind of strengths and skills you have and how can you align for them. It's easy for me to say, uh, uh, focus on STEM. That's the science, technology, engineering, and math. That There's always going to be jobs in this, in this field. But when I think about it also, uh, at least if I am in school or I'm, I'm entering USD as a student, I would want to be in a job that helps create robots and also in a job that cannot be taken away by robots. <laughs> So, uh, so think about some people may not have that, the interest in IT, so that's okay. Think of what other things as humans we need in the future. So um, also we cannot underestimate the power of customer service. I'm not saying go to Walmart and be a customer service person there, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm thinking about, think about how much customer service is going to be essential in the new world. After, and new world is really after the, the COVID-19. We Companies that are going to succeed the most are the ones that are going to stay connected with their customers, provide the most value um, at where their customers would not go somewhere else. And of course, sales. Sales, there's always demand for sales. And the tricky thing is a lot of schools, they don't teach students how to, uh, how to sell. Um, and the, the challenge is, I believe, regardless what your uh, major is, 
even if you are majoring as a nurse, get a sales class because we need to learn how to sell ourselves. We need to, if you eventually want to start a business, you can do the best product in the world, but if you don't know how to sell it, communicate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nobody's going to buy it. So sales. And if you feel you're a kind of person who doesn't like sales, it's okay. Read a class, read a book about it. Take one class about it. It's important for us to shift our mindset. So these are some of the things I think about, and it's different per person. What matters is to, for us to continue to provide value and not to put ourselves in a situation where our job could be easily done by a robot or easily can be let go during difficult economic situation. That is just incredibly helpful advice. I mean, really thinking about, you know, what are the problems of the future? What are the challenges of the future? And how can I help solve them, right? How can I um, stand out? Um, how can I, you know, market myself? brand myself. Um, and so these are, you know, considering, you know, taking those um, sales and marketing focused um, classes, mm -hmm. um, really, really great tips. And as an international woman, what would your top tips be to help other international women get ahead in the workforce? Okay. So uh, I coach executives and I always observe the difference between women and men of how we communicate, how we interact, how we make decisions. And what I realize that as women, regardless of our background, regardless of what country, what religion, what, what our experiences are, we tend to keep beating ourselves up and we keep thinking that we always need to be perfect. So my first advice is forget about being perfect. There's no perfection and we should not be perfect. Uh, be okay to make mistakes, learn from these mistakes and speak up. Uh, I know, I'll, like, for example, I'll share with you uh, a story. I was uh, coaching this woman and she kept talking about her dream to, to be the, one of the first uh, women executives exe in, in her bank. She's a banker and she want to be an executive. And all of her bank uh, at that time were all men. The board were all men. And she told me one time that she went to work. She was in a meeting. Uh, everybody was in the room were men. And they were talking about a problem that the banking industry was facing with fraud and all kinds of things. And she had, according to what she told me, that she had a great idea that she believed would totally help the situation, not just for her bank, but for the industry. Uh, but then she said that she stayed quiet the entire hour of the meeting and then everybody left and she never shared her idea with anyone. And I said, like, why? Why? Opportunity. Yeah. Why didn't you share? She said, what if they think it's not a good idea and think I am stupid to use that, those words? What, what if it's not really a solution and I don't want to embarrass myself in front of my executive team? And she stayed quiet. And you know, it's not, this is not the only time I hear something like this. I hear it all the time where we stay quiet. We, uh, we're not sharing our voice. We're not giving our opinion because we're afraid of making mistakes and afraid of being judged. Who cares about that? Let other people judge you. Speak up. If in order for us to, to advance, we need to bring value. We need to speak. We need to be able to present and we need to be able to face our fears. So what, one thing I tell everybody, Feel the fear and take action anyway. Take action. If, they, if, if you didn't get it right this time, you will get it right the next time. So that's some, something as simple as that I recommend to every woman, regardless what her age or what her background is. Thank you. I mean, my, myself being an um, immigrant as well, a lot of what you said completely resonates. Um, so I'm sure our listeners who are um, immigrants international will find that um, you know, resonate with them as well. But also women, women in America. So, right. It's women, regardless where, mm -hmm. what country we're from, it, it is some, I, I question sometimes why, like why? And I wonder if it's a gene, it comes with our gene and part of our purpose as women to challenge the system and challenge ourselves um, as if we're born with it. And our purpose in life is, to do the opposite. It could be a little bit generational too, right? The yeah. values that we were raised with, um, because you know, the, the with the Generation Z and the millennials, they, they are being brought up with different values. So yes. we think that sense of you know um, being fearful of making a mistake or beating ourselves up constantly or that imposter syndrome. I'm noticing that more with 
the older generations versus the newer ones that are being brought, you know, raised more confident. But correct me if I'm wrong, but that's- No, and I think I'm you're an expert in this because you're dealing with the millennials and also the Gen Z so much more than, like in my situation, I'm not dealing as much with Gen Z because right now they're more the interns, sure. but uh, you're, you're seeing the difference. And I think as women, we learned. And also men, there's amazing- fathers out there that are helping their daughters to um, to sure. step up and have her confidence and doing their best not to uh, differentiate between their boy and their girl. And yes, so we, we have the power to change it. And um, so given that our work environment has changed drastically these um, last few weeks, how can leaders help their virtual team stay energized? Okay, good. I love this question. So there's multiple things we need to do. I recognize a lot of leaders may not have managed a team in a virtual environment before. Mm -hmm. And it is extremely overwhelming for them because uh, I also know a lot of them were resisting it for years. And now they're forced to have an entire team uh, work uh, from home and they may not have the tools, they may not know how to do things. So here are some things that I recommend for, for managers. And I'm a kind of person who mix leader and manager because I believe that employee engagement, regardless if you're a manager or you're a leader, you need to focus on it. So you'll see me mixing them up. But uh, what I recommend for them is, number one, is to stay connected with their team members. And this is important whether you are virtually working or you are in person, which is having one-on-one -on -one meetings on a weekly basis. I recognize some, uh, some managers may have a lot of team members, then just schedule 10 minutes one-on-one uh, -on, -one on a weekly basis with each one of the team members. Check how they're doing, ensure that they're fine, listen to what they're experiencing, but don't make them feel disconnected because of what we are experiencing right now. And I recognize that uh, productivity, we need to ensure it doesn't go down, wh whether it's dur during the coronavirus or, or after. So ask your team to send you updates of what they're working on, some of the challenges they're experiencing, what projects are being closed. Um, I like even as simple as put together an Excel spreadsheet, one column, the projects, another column, when they started, the third column, when they expect it to be completed. Mm -hmm. Next, the status, is it in progress? Is it completed? Is it uh, they're facing challenges? What are dependencies? So you, you, it, a big part of the communication is shifting from just walking around the office and checking on your team to now being intentional in asking for weekly updates and having the one-on-one -on -one meetings with the team. So that is all one. The second recommendation is uh, keep your team updated with what's going on with the organization. The worst thing you want is for the team members to do do their work, but they lose sight of how their work is contributing to the bottom line of the of the company and the purpose of their meaning of the of the work that they're doing. So keep them updated. Tell them of uh, any changes in the organization, especially right now. Um, ensure you you keep clarifying how their work is helping to the over with the overall mission of the company. The third one is to keep your team up uh, connected with each other because when we're working virtually, we're not having the water cooler time. We're not going to have coffee with each other and lunch. So uh, do that virtually. I recommend for leaders to schedule weekly, even if it's half an hour. Um, I call it the virtual water cooler time. I encourage them even to, one of my favorite idea is to plan a lunch, have the team members order lunch from a local restaurant, have it delivered to them. And the best part, have the, the manager pay for it. <laughs> so, and it doesn't have to be out of pocket. You just expense it to the company. But this has a lot of uh, powerful things. First, you're bringing the team together. Second, you're supporting the community and your team, they're gonna appreciate it. And third, that they feel that they're being um, taken care their of. Their contributions are valued. Yeah, and it's fun. So these are the three things. Think about as a manager what you're doing to connect with each team member, to connect them with the overall organization, and to connect them with each other. So that's my, my recommendation. My and that's keep it fun, too. Like, if it's not fun, we're not going to be able to do a good job. So keep it fun. Sure. Um, and... 
for those of uh, for the team members so what would your top five tips be for those who are working remotely so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll shift things that I mentioned yep. earlier. So if your manager is not uh, reaching out to you and scheduling one-on-ones, reach out to the manager and schedule these one-on-ones. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure that you, you keep your manager updated. Make sure that you are um, sending the weekly updates. Mm -hmm. And then also um, use the commute time for training. So as some of the tips, a lot of us, we may have half an hour or 20 minute commute time in the morning and the same in the afternoon. Don't waste time. Don't waste that time. Instead, use it for uh, um, additional Doctor. training. Listen to a podcast, read an article, be extremely intentional in um, as, as you are working remotely to continue to develop your skills. We talked earlier that the skills that are going to be in demand in the future may be different than the current skills you have. And a lot of us are extremely busy, but if we are intentional and we block time on our calendar to help us um, um, ensure, say that, okay, this is my training time and you do it constantly, that's, that's absolutely going to help you. Um, so uh, stay connected with your team and ensure that you block any distractions as well. Because right now we have so much distractions, whether people that have children and playing and screaming in the background and we're seeing it a lot, or uh, if, you, if you don't, and I know in my situation, I don't have children, but I'm constantly distracted because I want to check the news. I want to see what's going on. Any update? Did they open the country? Um, so we need to be smart of how we are managing these uh, distractions. And um, there's so many tools, like one of them is called Le Leash Lock. Leash Lock. What is uh, that? Uh, uh, so what, uh, oh, Leash Block. Oh, leash leash block. block. Okay. So what it does is you can go to Leash Block and you can put the websites that you keep visiting throughout the day. In my situation, CNN, MSNBC, uh, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. It automatically locks those sites for it you. Locks you. <laughs> <laughs> and can, I love that. And you can put uh, specific times that you wanna you you wanna give yourself permission to check them. Okay. So even if you don't have the willpower like me to stop yourself from checking, because it's easy to be like, okay, just one one minute. Well, this one minute becomes a lot of distraction. So uh, so you go and you have something a tool monitor you and stop you from constantly ke to keep checking them. So I don't know if I shared with you five, but these are some of the tips. Oh, that's these are that extraordinarily helpful. Thank you. And um, for our students and alumni in career transition for our, who are preparing for those remote job interviews, would you have any tips for them? Yeah, so my tips for that is there's really your preparation process should be the same, whether you are doing a virtual interview or whether you are meeting in person. Um, in terms of the preparation. So make sure you are able to answer the basic questions like what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Why should we hire you? Um, all, all of these things that are so important. If you don't know these questions, go online. There's so much resources online. Just Google it. Go to the Career Center at USD. Ensure that uh, you have... Um, you have, they're, they're going to do the mock interviews. I know you, your team did so many mock interviews oh, with me. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I know like Linda Scale, uh, mm -hmm. is it Scale or Scales? She did so many and I appreciate that. So, um, so in terms of the preparation, it's really the same. In terms mm -hmm. of when you are being in the interview, make sure there's not mess in the background mm -hmm. uh, have a, a clear uh, clear background that is uh, organized um, ensure that you have good internet connection because the last thing you want the it to be a distraction and also uh, have a good light so i'll show you an example this is a light you can get on amazon it's called mm -hmm. uh, ring light and so i'll show you as example if i put the light off you see how dark I am right now? Sure. And that's why I ensure that I have a ring light. I have a little bigger than this one, but in their situation, this is $20. Ring light, you get it on Amazon and you ensure that you are clear how people are seeing you instead of you being in the dark. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I loved it. I'm going to get one right after this conversation. <laughs> But you know, it's tricky with Amazon. They used to sell this for $15 and in the last two weeks, they increased wow. it to 20. So they're so tricky. More people are buying it. 
Yeah, but think about how you put yourself in a place where it makes you look professional, your background looking professional, you have a good lighting. Um, and these things some students may not have thought about. So think about them, they are important. Uh, in addition to having good internet connection, I even recommend to them not to use wireless and instead to use the wire to connect mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, so it, why take any risk during this time? So here are some tips. Well, Dima, these are incredibly helpful advice and tips, both for our students and alumni. Um, so I would like to thank you so much for sharing your experience and insights with us. And to all of our listeners out there, um, Dima is an active um, mentor um, on our team networking platform. So please do feel free to reach out to her. Um, the URL is mentoring.sandiego.edu. She's also a three-time TED, TEDx a speaker, so we'll have all of her um, videos and um, speaking engagements um, available on the team platform as well. Um, Dima, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to see you. Um, and be safe and healthy out there. You too. Thank you.